Welcome to Bunker Brothers. Graham, we're back with another fantastic episode, and it is the holiday season. The season of the holidays. The season of the holidays, and what are we going to be doing tonight? We are re-examining the saints. So re-examining the saints, and what does that really mean for us? Well, it means we're looking at the, the men, the people, the myths, the legends, and also looking for what is the truth? What is the truth about these guys and what they did and how things went? And um, I'm thinking that's, that's going to be interesting because tonight we're taking up a specific saint relevant to the holiday season. And what is this? St. Nicholas. St. Nicholas. Niklaus. Niklaus? Yeah, St. Niklaus. Oh, you're being fancy. Being very fancy tonight. I mean, oh. I'm pretty pumped. I'm pretty pumped. We got Periscope going on this side because we're Periscoping this episode live. And then we are also recording it on YouTube. So, I mean, it's going to be awesome. I mean, I'm just looking forward to this so much. Been looking forward to it all day long. I have to. Putting us out there and letting people see just the inner workings of what we're doing, how we interact, and and including an audience as well in it. And that is a whole new deal. And uh, I'm, just not I'm sure excited. I'm to look at the camera or not. Just you know, the whole the hardest thing about doing anything like this is that when you're looking at the cameras or like this, you know they're, they're seeing everything. And what's worse is the camera is low, sort of like looking up your nose the whole time. Sorry, well, looking up your nose. No, well we can switch uh, seats and they can anyway, look up yours. Anyway, Saint Nicholas. Saint on Nicholas. With, on with the real show. Saint Nicholas. So what about Saint Nicholas? Quim? He was born in 300 A.D. in Lycia, which is an Asia Minor. Asia Minor. Lycia. And I, and I get the feeling that Lycia was a territory, we would say state, um, because the town, <coughs> excuse me, uh, was called Myra. So Myra, okay. Lycia, Asia Minor. So Myra, now Lycia, area. Asia Minor. And that's where you get this guy named St. Nicholas. Well, he wasn't saint then. He wasn't? Not when he was born. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, the myth starts right from there for St. Nicholas. I mean, there's a myth uh, for, about him that as soon as he was born, he immediately stood up and praised God. Uh, there's another myth that he never drank uh, his mother's milk on the fast days of the church. So typical to a lot of saints, uh, the people will talk about, they'll add a lot of myth to these guys. And here's a myth right from the very birth. Okay, you got well, a myth about St. Nicholas. Let's talk about what we actually know to be true. What are the facts? Uh, he was born in 300. Uh, his parents were wealthy. They were oh, they were merchants. Nicholas they were, was rich. They had money. Uh, but they died early in his life. Poor Nicholas. Um, I want to say age three or so. That may not be accurate, but I want to say that. Uh, he was raised by an uncle who was an abbot in the church. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. See, that is interesting. So he had a church raising, church background. Um, let's see. Nicholas of Berry, an early Christian bishop. Do, 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 do. He is also known as Nicholas the Wonder Worker and is the patron saint of sailors, merchants, archers, repentant thieves, prostitutes, children, brewers, pawnbrokers, and students. That's everybody. It pretty much covers everybody, yes. Yeah, at least two of those could be at the same time. Uh, more than two. Because <laughs> I guess you could be a prostitute and a repentant thief at the same time. Yeah, I think so. I think so. So why, why are we doing St. Nicholas in the holiday season? Well, why is that important? Well, a lot of times because, you know, here, here in North America, here in the U.S., Santa Claus has really got a, a big deal about, you know, the gift giving, him coming and visiting. And there's a lot of, like, different opinions concerning how this goes, like with Christianity, with, 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 actual, with actual Christianity. And there are some people who will honestly believe, you know, say that Christmas really has nothing to do with really Christianity. And they'll definitely say St. Nicholas doesn't because of the image of Santa Claus, which you know, it's really more or less a modern image. I mean, he we didn't get the round, red-bellied dude until, you know, much, much later, thanks to Coca-Cola, primarily, uh, doing their images of, of Santa Claus and um, promoting the idea of him being this big, 
you know, rosy-cheeked, round-bellied guy that's running around giving presents to everybody. Well, in that story, and people came... were really turned off. They're really turned off from the idea of 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 someone be giving credit for giving stuff all the time, and they look at it like, oh, this is a lie. But there's a reason why people remember Saint Nicholas, and it's not because of Santa Claus. That's just a, a hazy memory idea of a real person who was actually very genuine, very given, giving, and was described as being wiry. 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 I mean, I'm telling you what the, that's, that's the description, wiry. Uh, well, and the, the modern perception of Santa Claus as the, the fat elf comes mostly from the visit from St. Nicholas by Clement Clark Moore. Right. And yes, I had to pull it up because I could not remember the name of the author. Okay. Um, but that's where we get the the Coca-Cola image of Santa Claus from. Well, even at that time... When that was put out, it was like he was a right, he was, a, he was considered a right jolly old elf. Right. Or, you know, like, so still being not quite full human size, that was, there was another common theme to uh, Santa Claus for a while. But he started out being revered because he was a very giving person, and he really did make a difference in some people's lives. Actually, there were several occasions where St. Nicholas impacted his community and one of them was the real St. Nicholas was put in prison by Diocletian along with a bunch of bishops and priests because of one of the persecutions. Before, before ever there was any church meetings or any, 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 any uh, like, you know, when uh, Constantine came to power, that's when they allowed, then Constantine came to power, that's when he lifted the uh, persecution off of the church. Right. And he made, unfortunately, for better or for worse, he made Christianity the state religion of the Roman world, and I don't, I don't, know, I don't think it was necessarily a good idea. But hey, here's what happened: in that time, Saint Nicholas had been in jail for a good while, along with a whole bunch of. Other. In fact, there's a historian that says that at that time there was no room for the thieves because there were so many people from the church in the jails at that time. <laughs> well, yeah. maybe that's why he's the patron saint of unrepentant thieves. On that, on that. There is evidence to show that he may have been tortured while he was in prison under the rule of Diocletian. Well, that would make sense. Most but, people in prison at that time were tortured. So, so the evidence of deal. this the evidence of this comes from a weird fact concerning his skull. Hmm. You mentioned that earlier. Okay, so, so the remains of the remains of, of Saint Nicholas. Sorry, kids. The remains of Saint Nicholas. Yeah, he's dead. Um, Santa Claus is dead, dude. But the remains of St. Nicholas are actually... Yeah, tell my daughter. Man. I know, right? The remains of St. Nicholas are apparently in one of the churches. Um, where was it at? You, you pulled it up. Bari, Italy. Bari, Italy. And so they have in there a skull that does date to the proper period to be St. Nicholas. And then what's really crazy about it is that the skull shows um, that it has had its nose, the nose of the person was broken multiple times. And it's a sign of potentially being tortured. Hmm. And so um, that's, uh, that's this, so it's, it's interesting because Diocletian would have tortured him. But uh, that's not the first or last time that he ends up in jail. Am I correct? That is, you are correct. It might so be the first. You gotta tell sure. me about, you gotta tell me about St. Nicholas, the jailbird man. Well, he was a, he was made a Pope. Let's start with that. Oh, okay. Uh, he was made a Pope in Myra. And the story, roughly speaking, because I don't have it in front of me, but the story, roughly speaking, is the other bishops from the area came down to appoint a new bishop. And one or more of them were told in a vision or a dream or however you want to classify that, that the first person to walk into the church the next day should be made the bishop. Man, and if only I had been there. We'd have been in a lot of trouble. I'd have been the bishop. Just walk in and be the bishop. We'd have been in a lot of trouble. I'm a time machine, man. So. I would have made a great bishop. Anyway. Wow, you just looked um, at me. <laughs> you just looked at me terrible, man. I do that a lot. Um, so he was made the bishop. We get down to the Council of Nicaea, which everybody know, has heard of at least. Right. Church, they decide a lot here. They decide a lot. They decide that Je that Jesus Christ is uh, truly both God and man. And that was the big point. Yeah. 
And that was the point that, that Nicholas kind of got in trouble over. Now, wh- how did he get in trouble? Well, what, there was What a, does Santa Claus do, man? <laughs> there was another bishop there, and give me just a second, I'll tell you his name, uh, because he's not important. We don't know who he is. Uh, I mean, Eusebius. Obviously. I'm sorry, no, that's the historian. Do, do, do. Anyway, there was another bishop there who was saying that Jesus Christ was not fully God. And that was one of the, the talking points at the council. Right. Well, Nicholas heard all he could stand to hear of it. And he ended up attacking the guy. Like, <laughs> physically attacking. So I, I you know, heard that he punched him. Fisticuff type yeah, I, I attack. Heard, I heard that he punched him. Santa Claus went and threw down on this guy and punched him. In real in history, as far as we know, Santa Claus punches a guy. Well, that's real because it was taken all the way to the I emperor. I love it. It was taken all the way to Constantine uh, because they said that no one or anyone who attacked someone else in sight of the emperor oh. had to be imprisoned. So he got in trouble because he did it in front of the emperor. And so... So he, he attacked later uh, and punch over, him? over the deity of Jesus Christ wow. and, I mean, and was put in prison by Constantine for it. Points for defending the deity of Christ, but we take the points away because you'd actually punch somebody to do it. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I get it. But we're, you know, we're really, you, you know, by doing this, you're demystifying St. Nicholas. I mean, and that's what you want to do. The fact was that he was a generous person. And um, and he was a pastor. He was he was a bishop, which is a pastor, and uh, and he and he did care for his people. He ended up he ended up really getting there by paying the price of being tortured and 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 remaining faithful to Christ. And he ends up also giving gifts to people. And because of some of these gifts, it kind of gets carried around that he gives gifts. So so you know you you've heard of putting stockings by the by a chimney, right? Yep. And now I know where that story comes from. Well, St. Nicholas, Saint from, Nicholas apparently uh, threw some gold. One story has he dropped it down a chimney and it fell into a sock. Another one had it where he threw it through a window and it got into a sock. But it's really not unusual that they were drying their clothing and people didn't wear shoes quite like we think today. And um, so here they were drying out the their foot coverings or stockings. And he throws in a bag of gold or tosses it or puts it in there, and it, it's in a sock, and they find well, now, it there. Well, here's, now, here's what I've heard on that. Oh, you've heard something else, huh? Uh, no, it's basically the, the same, but oh. a little more detail. There's always, there's always some, like, lack of detail on it some was, things. It was a man who was widowed and had three daughters. Oh. Well, the he wanted to marry off the oldest one, but didn't have a dowry. Okay. For his daughter. Right, because you had to have a dowry to be able to get a good man. Right. That's how it was. That's unfortunate that stopped. Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> hmm. But because Nicholas knew about this gentleman and his daughters and the situation, that's why he threw the bag of gold in ah. was for the girl's dowry. I got gotcha. you. And it landed in the stocking. So you, you got there. Just a little more detail. Okay. Because, um, see, that story goes... Other ways, too. That story sometimes says that the man had three daughters and they were being sold. Yeah, I heard that version. That's one of them, too. Another one says that they're looking for suitors. Actually, to be honest, probably probably the stories are not inaccurate either way. It may have been a combination of the two. It may have been marry them off or sell them. And Well, and Um, that's the case, too, because we're talking about places that had extreme poverty and, and they were very much locked in their classes and money had... Uh, you know, did you know Santa Claus has his own postal code in Canada? At North Pole? No, seriously. In Canada, Santa Claus's postal code is H O H O H O. Ho ho. Did ho. not make that up. Ho ho ho. Yeah, no. H O H O H O. Yes, I know it spells ho ho ho. <laughs> um. Thought you'd like that. So. The, the remainder of that story was that oh, when oh. the second daughter came up to get married was when he dropped it down the chimney, thus the Santa Claus coming in the chimney thing. 
Oh, I gotcha, I gotcha. Um, and it seems like all the miracles I've read about St. Nicholas, they all seem to have groups of three in them. Yes, there's like a, one occasion. You've got the three daughters, you've got the three, three children. children that were resurrected mm -hmm. by him. Oh, I love that story about him. Oh, go for it. Okay, so there, there's a couple versions of the story of Santa Claus when it comes to, or St. Nicholas, and it comes to the three children. Okay, one is that there were three children who wandered away and were getting lost, and a guy who was a butcher lured them into his place and put them in pickle barrels in the bottom of his building. Why well, has it got to be pickle barrels? I'm just saying. It, actually, my, the my legitimate, made pickles. Oh, oh. The legitimacy of the story but, actually but, comes. The legitimacy of the story actually comes from the pickle barrel part, because this is one well, that stays. This is one that stays more times in the story. So the story goes: a Santa Claus that excuse me that the three kids wandered away and the guy this butcher gets a hold of him and takes him down to his basement and i don't know what he does to him but but apparently he murders them and he puts their body into pickle barrels that are in the bottom of his place okay the other one is that the guy actually goes and gets them and specifically gets these kids and murders and puts them in the, in the pickle barrels now here's but what happens. Way it was pickle but either way the pickle barrel part of the story for saint nicholas and this stays the same and then St. Nicholas, he finds out about this, and he oh, yeah, goes so pickling tubs. seriously, yeah, pickling tubs, so or pickle barrels, which uh, which you get that, and so then because <laughs> you keep pickle barrels around, don't you, Graham? For you well, never know when the kids might wander off. I, really? No, I'm just teasing. I'm teasing. Man, that hurts. Your dad, you did your dad work at Mount Olive Pickle? He did, and okay. we're not even getting paid for that. What if you fall into a pickle vat? Well, my uncle went swimming in a pickle vat one time. <laughs> he literally got pickled, man. <laughs> I that, wish I was making that up. That's he, funny. He, my my mother's brother went to work for Mount Olive Pickles one summer, and I was actually working for my father. So he was working for his brother-in-law. They called him after they were cleaning one of the barrels out. They right. had just refilled it, and he decided to go swimming in it. Um, needless to say, he did not have that job very long. No. Uh, he is now a Presbyterian minister. Don't don't go swimming in the pickle barrels, man. <laughs> but it was there were no pickles in it. Yeah. Uh, so basically he prayed for them and they came back to life. That's that's the story on that one. And, and about so he, so he rescued the three children. Yeah, and about and the, the three gold, daughters. And the three daughters. And, go, go, and about go. the uh, gold, and about the gold balls. Like so, I one place said that that comes from the three kids that were saved, mm -hmm. that were resurrected, and another person says it comes from the bags of gold being put into the stockings, right? Or orbs of gold that were sometimes told about. And by the way, that is where some people apparently get the tradition of putting an orange in the toe of the sock. Okay, never thought about that. Ran across that today. Couldn't uh, believe it. What What else is important about the three gold balls? Go ahead and do that part. What else? What? It's pawn shop. That's a symbol of pawn shop. That's where the pawn shop yeah, during, the three during medieval from. period of time, they, they couldn't read, half of them, most of them. So you would look for uh, the object outside of a store, and that's how you knew it was inside of it. With, for pawn shops, it was the three gold balls. <coughs> for barber shops, it was the red and white pole. Barbershop, red and white pole. But that's because the, your barber shop was your uh, surgeon. It was also your leecher. Yeah, he would let your bad humors out. he cut you and <laughs> let your bad humors out. Which, I'm you know, I, uh, I'm, a, I'm like, there are some people I want to cut and let their bad humor <laughs> out, don't you? I think they're, not nah, never be violent. I don't, don't think you're supposed to say that. I don't want to suggest that. violence. Never suggest that. That's not good. We don't want to be that way. Um, so, <laughs> yes, interesting thing. Yes, I know some people like that. Right. Um, so, anyway, uh, we got sidetracked by the miracles. But never, never. He, uh, after after he assaulted the other bishop at the Council of Nicaea, he was put in prison. They said he stayed there for an indeterminate amount of time, and he had a vision or a dream one night of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Ah, oh, the Blessed Virgin Mary. And I don't feel bad saying that because I feel she is blessed and oh, she yeah. was a virgin, so hey. She was. Um, she didn't and, stay a virgin. She no, was married. But... And she had other kids. And she had other kids. Uh, but but when Jesus was, was born, yeah, he was visited was by the Virgin Mary and Jesus, and Mary gave him the robe of a bishop, and Jesus <laughs> gave him the gospel, 
Okay. And apparently other people that were at the council had the same vision, and they realized if that's what was happening, then they had to they let him out of prison and make him a bishop again. Had him out of again. prison let him be a bishop again. And so he became okay. a bishop again. Um, well, I wish I, things were that easy nowadays, you know. That's crazy. I mean, I'm, you know, the popularity for, for St. Nicholas as a saint is... Um, <laughs> Waving at Welcome. somebody coming in. Yeah. Uh, the popularity of St. Nicholas as an actual saint, mind you, is insane. There's 2,000 churches that are dedicated to him in his memory. Only 2,000? 2, 2,000. He is the, the second, well, like the second most painted or depicted saint next to Mary. He's like number two or three as being the most painted and or depicted in art. That's, it's hard to believe that's this. That's a pretty good resume. It is pretty, it is pretty crazy. For a person who, you know, did exist, and did you also know that St. Nicholas continues to have his own mythology outside of just a Christmas story? Because in Marvel Comics, they decided that he was a mutant and that he had a specific mutant, and they called him an Omega-level mutant. So Santa Claus is an Omega-level Mutant. I'm a According DC to the Marvel fan. Universe. I'm a DC fan. According to the Marvel Universe, Marvel. he's an Omega level. And I'm sorry mutant. for all those Marvel fans out there, but I'm a DC guy. <laughs> um, That's crazy. There, there were the three daughters, the three children, the three slaves that he imprisoned or he got released from being executed. Right. Um, let's. So. Howdy. Uh, so. <laughs> he says, Howdy. They can see He's that. very eloquent. I am. Sorry. Go ahead. You see what we're saying? <laughs> Sorry for those of you <coughs> listening to this on YouTube. We got sidetracked. I might dub it out on, on YouTube. Who knows? I could do anything. I'm sorry anyway. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> he, uh, he got three innocent slaves released before they were executed. So there's another three. And there's the thing about the sailors. He had a he had a lot of dealings with sailors. Apparently. Santa Claus had a lot of dealings with sailors. Hmm. Yeah, it sounds that's, kind of strange, doesn't it? That's never good, my friend. Um, there was one that Saint Nicholas calmed a storm while he was traveling, so kind of Jesusy. So during the Reformation period, um, Saint Nicholas took a real hit uh, because remember at that time the Reformation they were really looking to break away from the papal church and they were breaking away from Catholicism. And so saints were kind of getting kicked in the teeth in that kind of time period. So St. Nicholas started taking a back seat where, you know, the cultures were like, well, well, who's going to be the gift giver? If you get rid of St. Nicholas, who's going to be the gift giver? So some of the people in Europe during the Re Re Reformation actually started having baby Jesus be the gift giver. And St. Nicholas was his sidekick. And so, <laughs> so, you know, it's like, let's go ahead and pick. Let, let's get away from one thing and pick something just as weird to really do. <laughs> and uh, and so people just were so really weird about that. And, of course, this resulted in Santa Claus taking on several forms like uh, Rough Nicholas of uh, Rolaus, uh, Ashy Nicholas, Ashid Claus, or Furry Nicholas, which for the furries out there you'll love, <laughs> is um, Petals Nickel, Petals Nickel. <laughs> Because he wore a, a furs, and on these occasions did, he did was. Did you really just make a furry? <laughs> I did. I did a furry reference. <laughs> on these occasions, the um, <laughs> on these occasions he appeared as someone who was um, chiding children or or warning children or or punishing kids, and and I guess that's where we get the idea of Santa Claus bringing good kids, one thing and and bad kids another thing. So Cole, I guess, is that later on. It's just really weird because, you know, in Europe, they changed the date, too, from December 6th uh, over to December 25th, which is um, Christkindl, Chris, Chris, Chris Christkindl, Christkindl, and so that's where we kind of get... Chris Kringle. Right. That's, that's where we still get the uh, celebration of St. Nicholas Day in the 25th of December, and then of all things, you've got Christmas, which blends with that, a mass celebrating Christ. And then you have that blending together become Christmas. So it's kind of a weird thing. But my favorite one is uh, the Yule Goat. Do you hear about the Yule Goat? The Yule Goat. Or how about the Poop Log? That's my favorite Christmas tradition. We should talk <laughs> about that one. 
<clears throat> well, be my guest. Yeah, I'm kind of getting off on that one, but I could not <laughs> believe that there was this one this one place. Uh, I've got to find it again because I'm telling you I'm serious. Uh, there's this log. <laughs> and if you do the right thing, it will uh, shoot out gifts and candies and stuff like that. And uh, that is just really, really weird. So when I find that reference, I will definitely share that. That that was bizarre. Um, just bizarre. Did you know Santa Claus gets the most letters from France? In the whole no, world, more French children write Santa Claus than American kids. Because American kids, they know where to, they know where to, they know mom and dad's buying it for. <laughs> I think they figured it out. So back to St. Nicholas. Okay. We've, we've gotten off on Santa Claus again. Just a little bit. Um, after he died, and he did die. Yes, St. Nicholas, the actual person, did die. Um, his tomb in Myra became a popular place of pilgrimage. Um, that didn't work the way I wanted it to. Hmm. Sorry about that. Sinter. Yes, we use notes. We're not Sinter. doing this off the top of our head. Sinterklaas. Um... The remains, the big bones from his sarcophagus. Yeah, so Santa Mara Claus's remains were stolen. Wow! By Who? by Italians. <laughs> they they stole them. Yes, they stole them. Mm. They well, they borrowed them and didn't tell anybody. Yeah. Um. Now there's a story that says that while they were at sea, they had a storm. Okay. And until this problem with the bones being stolen was straightened out the storm was not going to end oh why are you laughing oh you know sometimes people put a comment on and you're like what yeah. so you were saying the storm wasn't ending um so they actually went back and i don't remember i've got to find the how they actually dealt with the bones oh man but they act the bones ended up in italy anyway at the the what did we say? We talked about it a while ago. Well, I think it's actually the a basilica the, named after Saint Nicholas. So it basilica should be yeah. De, de, de Saint Nicholas. De, de Nicholas. Santa Nicholas. Um. So yeah, his his bones have been on as much journeys as he was. Yeah. Which might be the origin of you know Saint Nick flying around the world because he almost did. Sure, sure. But if he did, there's more ship. If he did, his sleigh would be the fastest uh, vehicle in the world. That's true. His ridiculous fast and i just remembered is spain cotillions region where the children hit tiel de nadal or the poop log and then they look under a blanket to discover that the log has pooped out a pile of presents and candies now if you've got to have a christmas celebration how about we have a poop log that's that's the way to celebrate if you don't want santa claus we could do that Oh, gosh. I don't make this. This is actually, this is really stuff that you really find on the internet. You shouldn't look there. <laughs> Should not go there. Unless you're going to Bunker Brothers. So what really about St. Nicholas is really important is, one, that he actually stood the test of faith, that he really did um, believe what he believed about Jesus Christ. He believed that Jesus Christ was truly the well, Son and, of God. And he was, a, he was a defender of the faith. He was. And he was tortured for his faith early on during Diocletian. He actually did pastor a, a, a very real congregation of people. Apparently, he did a good job because people loved him. Yeah. He was generous, although people like to well, talk about that. If people generous. threw bags of gold through my window, I'd like them too. Well, yeah, I guess it would make a difference, wouldn't it? You know, hmm, bags of gold. So That's if you want to throw bags of gold at me, I'll like you, I promise. Sure, sure. Yeah, uh, yeah. Santa was tortured. Someone said, "Yeah, he was tortured um, because under the Diocletian." Got to recap on that one. Under Diocletian, one of the rulers that was uh, under the control of Rome for a while, he persecuted Christians, and at that time, uh, Saint Nicholas was one of them. He was one of the bishops, and he got locked up, and uh, he got tortured while he was locked up, and uh, his skull shows fracture marks in his uh, nose for being multiple, having multiple breaks, which would come from torture. But he got released, like I said, and, um, and then got locked up again. Then got locked up again for punching somebody. But that was later on. It was a bishop. It was a bishop. He didn't like what he said, so he punched him. 
Yeah, it's really crazy what you can learn. I mean, it, these are these are reality too, and this is the real story of this man, and it it, it will get it will blow your mind when you look at what really happens and what he what he really did. I mean, it's it's insane because there's a lot of myth that gets added to people, but when you look at the actual person, you realize that there's a reason why we remember him as for for being generous, and there's a reason why we remember who he is. So, but so here's here's before we go into the fun stuff. Yeah. There's always I, fun stuff. I know stuff. you've got some, some just fun stuff over Coop there. Coop wasn't fun enough? No. Um, I don't know. But before we get on to that, what is the connection? I mean, we've talked about things that may be connections between the real St. Nicholas and Christmas. How should, how should living active Christians observe this in connection with Christmas? Well, that's one of the big things that, like, Christian households have – kind of a difficulty with is, you know, are you going to tell your kids uh, what it basically some people consider to be a lie, that this guy exists? Well, well he, he did exist. He's just not alive. And that's even harder to tell kids, <laughs> I guarantee. <laughs> you know? Is Santa Claus is dead? Yeah, is Santa Claus is dead. That's just not something you want to tell kids. But, um, but the thing is, is that uh, then again, it is a common thing to have people feel like that there's a, a gift g- giver in the holiday season. And uh, some people really look at the idea of Santa Claus as being de- as detracting from Jesus Christ and detracting from God, detracting from the true message of the season. But what if the man, St. Nicholas, didn't detract from that? What if the problem isn't him and it's really with us? Well, that, it's the myth you know, that we've created. Right. So so what if kids were, were told the true story about a man who was was generous, actually did give to others, did give to the needy, did give to the poor, cared about what was going on in his time, tried to make a difference, and stood up for what he believed in. Now, now Sarah, I want to tell all the kids he punched somebody, but but the thing My daughter is, would appreciate that. But the thing is, is that you know, isn't the true story better than the fake story? The fake story of just the the Papa Smurf that comes down from the North Pole. By the way, there's two places that wage kind of a battle over where he's actually from. Uh, yes, there is. There are two towns that claim to be the actual home of Saint Nicholas. Um, Saint Nicholas. Or, yeah. No. Well, of Santa, of Santa Claus, and uh, they actually have a little debate going, and they're just that's just so weird that it would happen that way. Um, so, North Pole, Alaska. Right. Okay, that's fine. But there's another uh, village that is um, in uh, Roven. Rovaniemi, Roviemi, wow, I'm never going to get it right. R O V A N, Rovan, I E M I, Amy. I'm going to just tackle like that. So, I'll, Look, I'm, I'll, I'm serious. They claim that they are the true home to St. Nicholas, and you can visit St. Nicholas there 365 days a year. Yeah, I'm going with North Pole, Alaska. I can pronounce that. Well, North Pole, Alaska had an actual sitting governor whose name was St. Nicholas on one occasion. A man ran and he won it. His name was St. Nicholas. Also, Santa Claus has an actual a legal pilot's license issued by Canada to uh, St. Nicholas. I'm well, sure. That's good. Yeah. I mean, um, you wouldn't want him flying in your airspace and not have him be licensed to fly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, just but it's the the reindeer going through the TSA really bother me. <laughs> <You know? laughs> do, do they get searched? Is it? Yeah, I'm sure they do. A TSA very very thorough. If they come to the U.S., it would it would take a while for them to go through Santa's bag. I would yeah. say. All right, so give us the Santa facts. Santa facts. Well, I think you've done pretty good, man. The reality is reconnecting him to who he was to who he is. Did you know he was a bachelor for the longest time? There was no mention of any Mrs. Claus. The idea of having a Mrs. Claus came a lot later. There was a poem that was written, and it was about Goody Claus. Goody, Goody being the word for a wife or a woman in this case. Okay. And that's what introduced the idea that there had to be a Mrs. Claus. And that right. was yeah, that was a, that was in the 1700s, or or um, or well, actually 1889 it was a readout. So 1889 when uh, Goody Santa Claus was written and that that's about a, a Mrs. Claus. Okay. Yeah, so he was he was single uh <laughs> up until the eighteen hundreds. That would make anyone grumpy on the North Pole, I guarantee from, it. From three hundred to eighteen hundred, yeah right. I would say so. Now uh, the reality though is that um that uh, there's a lot of fun debates. 
but apparently Philadelphia Eagles fans don't like Santa Claus at all. Philadelphia Eagles fans don't like anybody. Well, I'm not sure about this one, but uh, there was an occasion where Santa Claus came out, um, and it was a really bad game, apparently. Things weren't going the way they wanted, and uh, the Eagles fans began to throw uh, snowballs and rain them down. It was 1968. Rain them down on poor Santa Claus when he came out, and uh, the crowd booed him, and, I mean, the guy was really, really, really bad. Uh, they uh, they asked him, quote, when they asked him if he'd rep repeat the performance, he responded, no way. If it doesn't snow, they'll throw beer bottles. That's right. <laughs> so he was afraid to go back out there. At so least he understood that. Way to, way to run off Santa Claus. You uh, know what I'm saying? Philadelphia has a has a history of not being very nice to opposing sports teams. Did you know that? And I guess uh, Santa Claus, too. Right. So so Christmas is like a really weird thing because because it's really localized. So St. Nicholas becomes different things in different areas. So St. Nicholas in Africa, Santa Claus in Africa, some African countries, is considered to be a demon. And people will put Santa Claus masks on and go around and basically what we would call trick or treat. It's not really that. But they would they demand, demand alms or demand uh, food or gifts. And if you don't do it, they put a curse on you. Okay. Yeah, so so um, when you're doing some gift giving and you're sending gifts overseas, they sometimes will take out the Santa Claus related stuff because it's going to mean a different thing. It's going to scare a kid. <laughs> That's that that see, is weird. And here it scares adults. Yeah. So how can we reconnect to the truth of what St. Nicholas was and what will a Christian do today with this story? So I would encourage parents who are believers that if they want to, and I don't make a rule for anyone, but if they want to approach St. Nicholas or Santa Claus with the truth, here is an opportunity to teach them about someone that they're going to see, they're going to see on TV, they're going to see it on all the, they're going to see him everywhere. Here's an opportunity to talk to them about issues of faith, and about the real person, the real, the real St. Nicholas, the real man that was, was an inspiration to the people that he pastored. The real man that was an inspiration to his community and uh, served a long life in the church, making a difference. And honest to goodness, honest to goodness, had miracles that did happen because of his faith. So that's that's debate. People can debate that. But like I said, that story about the kids in the pickle barrels, you know, that, that story is pretty fairly legit because of it being the same story baseline all the time. And it makes sense because if you were going to preserve a body and you were going to do that back in that time and keep it from rotting, what would you do? Where would you put it? In, a in the barrel. brine. Yeah, yeah, you'd put it in the brine. And it sounds like some some creepy stuff, but it makes sense. So the story has that level of oh, legitimacy to it. Yeah. Now let's not make any mistake about that. Now Christmas Christmas Americanized is viewed very negatively, and uh, it was Santa Claus viewed negatively by some countries in Europe. Uh, because they don't want the Western version of of materialism and Santa Claus to overshadow their culture. I don't either. Have you been in Black <laughs> Friday sale lately? I mean, it's uh, it's tough because it's easy to look at people and uh, judge them because of the culture you think they're in, and uh, and it's interesting when someone sees a, the Americanized version of something. It's like you know, it's pervasive sometimes other places where maybe it shouldn't be. So. Who knows? I don't claim to. <laughs> so this, is, this has been a real learning experience. So what did I do with Santa Claus with my kids? You want to know what I did? What? I told them the truth. So I did. That Santa Claus was dead? Told them Santa Claus was a pastor. It was a real man. They loved Jesus. And that, you know, he gave gifts to people. And that's why we remember him in this way. That our part for him is fun and and they know you know they knew who well, this is when they were asking questions you know because whether or not I wanted them to believe in Santa Claus, my parents never promoted that in our in our household the idea of Santa Claus was never promoted. I'm being honest with you, but I was a, but I was one of those kids I believed in Santa Claus. <laughs> I mean I believed in Santa Claus. I believed in Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. I believed in all of that. You know, Don, even Donner being kind of a little bit of a jerk, totally believed it. Thank you. Why is Donner a jerk? Just saying, he always was. You watch, you watch Rudolph Red Nosed Reindeer. 
I thought it was Blitzen that was a jerk. Whatever, they're all jerks. They wouldn't let him play, you know, reindeer games yeah. or whatnot. Now, listen, I believed in it whether or not it was going to happen or not because I was a child. And something that's fanciful is something that's interesting. It's going to get a child's attention and it's going to cause their imagination to run. And and uh, and that's that's kind of normal. So I was one of those kids. I was like, oh, yeah, this is real for me. It was very real to my mind. But then again, look where I lived. I lived in the mountains of North Carolina. I lived less than a mile from Daniel, Bo Daniel Boone's trail. Yeah. I li lived two miles from the Over Mountain Men trail. I lived within a half mile of part of the Appalachian Trail. I lived near Howard's Knob that had a NASA, had a, a windmill that was up there for years. They finally took it down. Tweetsie Railroad was not too far off from where I lived at. Mystery, I heard its train whistle all the time. I heard Mystery Hill was located right down below that that was nearby. Ghost Town was in Maggie Valley running full tilt. It's not yeah. going now. Ghost Town was running full tilt. There was all kinds of... You had of, Oz out there. I, all, well, the remains. The remains of the Land of Oz on Sugar Mountain was out there. Uh, Linville Caverns was out there. So why wouldn't I think that those myths were somewhat true? Because Daniel Boone, the town I'm in, you know, was, was that... Name for does Daniel he have Boone? a mythological sense to him? Oh, yes. Yeah. Was he a real person? Yes. But uh, so when I was a kid, you know, dividing myth from what was real was kind of hard because... It was right around you. The, the myth was alive around you, and most of it was actually true locally. So it's like, okay, you know, so why not? <laughs> why not this guy from the North Pole? I mean, Civil War soldiers lived in Limbo Cavern and hid out there. <laughs> why not? It's not a club, you know? <laughs> I saw a bunny rabbit hop down one of the uh, trails behind my house one time at Easter time, and I was like, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> the Easter Bunny Trail goes right to my house. I knew it. <laughs> So, you know, it's one of those things. But kids are going to believe in things, and, and uh, sometimes you can't necessarily stop it. And uh, where I think that our biggest issue isn't so much promoting Santa Claus as, as just promoting such a level of, of commercialism and such a level of, of stuff and money. Well, you know, you, you talk about how you handle it with your kids. That's I'll, probably a big problem. I'll be honest, we've... Uh, my my daughter and I have always had a tradition of Christmas Eve before bedtime. We sit down and we read the night before Christmas, and we read the Christmas story from John. Oh, that's interesting. And we do both. Um, and I'll be honest with you, Santa Claus was never a big deal to her. It was her... Elf on a Shelf did always got us in trouble. Okay, Elf on the Shelf I do not like. Because my Elf on the Shelf, I swear, was carrying a sniper rifle the other day. Well, he's your Elf on the Shelf. Um, I don't like I don't like how he looks at me. <laughs> I'm not okay with this Elf on the well, Shelf. Never I'm, been. I'm not okay with it either because elf on the shelf. He, he makes a mess in my house and I have to clean it up. <clears throat> we we have had our Elf... Little has, creepy doll. ...has drawn on the bathroom mirror and sharpies i believe it and after about three days that crap will not come off uh he has raided the kitchen and made a mess in the kitchen <coughs> he has uh stacked up cans and decorated them with christmas lights mm -mm, not in my house now i will tell you the best one that ever happened though what's this he tied some type of string from the door jam to the Christmas tree and was sliding down the string. And my daughter came down and looked at me and said, Daddy, I have a problem. And oh, I no. said, what is your problem? And she said, I don't have any underwear in my drawer. What? Now, we wash clothes. That's right. not a problem. Right. Her underwear had been taken and had been put in the Christmas tree <laughs> to decorate the Christmas tree. <laughs> That's vicious. Man. She was she was horribly upset by that about six years old. And that was the elf that did all that. Yes, it was. Well, I had, I had nothing to do with it other than cleaning up the mess. So that Santa Claus man coming to a house near you personally. I was always creeped out by the idea somewhat that this guy could, quote, see you when you were sleeping. He knows when you're awake, knows when you're bad or good. That's my problem. You can't treat him like deity, so you can't do that. Shouldn't do that. 
But I was like, if he can see you in like that, then what's to say he can't see you in the shower, dude? I'm not okay with any guy who can get in my house anytime at night. If Santa Claus came, when, when I was in kindergarten, well, okay, when I was in kindergarten, I had to draw a picture. That, that, of, ex that explains why Santa Claus is dead. He saw when, you in the shower. When I was a kid, I drew a picture of Santa Claus. I had to draw a picture. You know, school school has this great idea all right. that we're all going to do Christmas pictures. Right. And so I did my Christmas picture, and there was my picture, beautiful house, snow on top, Christmas lights on there. And then what is happening at the chimney? Santa Claus is flying up the chimney, out the chimney, with his bottom on fire. Did you say Santa Claus that was, on fire? That was my picture I drew in kindergarten, and I was, I was gifted. In drawings. For for those of you on my Periscope. My teacher did not appreciate it. For those of you on Periscope, we work full time jobs and we're not doing this. Do we? And so we uh we eat while we do this. So we, forgive us for eating pizza on He camera. eats while we do this and I tell him you're smacking and it's getting in the audio and it's but driving it me doesn't. crazy. Well it's a lie. Guys, we've really enjoyed this shorter episode. I think we we actually went a little bit shorter with Saint Nicholas. We've been all over the place with this guy, right? All over the place. But the reality is that there is something here that is genuine. And I would hate to see the actual very real story of what turns out to be a godly man who tried to make a difference in his community be forgotten just because of the myths that have been added to it. And the commercialism here in the United States of America, the level we take it to where we kind of really lose track of it. The Reformation tried to make it about Jesus, and they, of course, tried to make Jesus the gift giver, giving kids <laughs> gifts. That didn't really help either. It's you better know, than the poop log. I don't know. I don't know about that. I'm kind of, I'm like, I'm thinking like that might be the greatest celebration of Christmas time ever. You go out there and get a log and look under a blanket for gifts, the log put out. I mean, I'm right there. That's right up with Linus and the Great Pumpkin. Loving it. All right, Graham, how are we ending this? Do you remember? We are doing this very carefully because we're, we're being on, we're better. on Periscope now. Periscope is over here, still watching. Good to see you. And so, oh, if you enjoyed this episode, hmm. please like, subscribe, and share also on Periscope. Hmm. If you didn't enjoy this episode, please like, subscribe, and care. Cause wow. You <laughs> have it in text. You can't do if it tonight. If you didn't enjoy this episode, please like, subscribe, and share because we don't care if you liked it or not. Do it anyway. Wow. This episode uh, of Bunker Brothers was brought to you by Sheep Low Ministries, which are serving. Well, I'm doing what you. You've thrown me off, man. Yeah, sure. I'm going to start over again, Ray. This episode of Bunker Brothers was brought to you by Sheep Low Ministries. Serving, serving the, the sheep, sheep below until, until they are at last, last above. above. You can find Sheep Below on Facebook and Twitter at Below Sheep. Also, Bunker Brothers uh, Facebook. Don't forget to check that out. Graham? The Faith Bunker on Facebook and Twitter, our men's Bible reading group. Hmm. And Lighthouse Cafe on Facebook, Twitter, and, of course, you can actually read from Lighthouse Cafe on Wattpad. Mm, some great books being written there, some commentaries and some good stories, awesome stories, exploring new things. Don't look at me like that. You know I'm behind schedule and writing. You know I am. I'm working on it. Man, hmm, talk about conviction. Ooh, conviction of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> no, that's Graham right there. I'll tell you right here, though, um, Graham, don't forget that that um, we also want to make sure to encourage everyone on Faith Bunker and say, hey, guys, we're going to read through the Bible again next year. And uh, our reading that we're going to be doing next year is going to be a chronological reading. It's going to be a little bit different. Uh, we're going to be approaching the reading in a chronological manner. And, Graham, what does that really mean, chronologically? Well, we know that uh, I like to use Kings and Chronicles as an example because huh. it works really well. Uh, Kings and Chronicles tells basically the same story. So what we'll do instead of reading all the way through Kings and then all the way through Chronicles is we'll take a story out of Kings and we'll read it out of Kings and we'll read it out of Chronicles in the same day. Interesting. I like to use a Joel. And then, and then if there's a psalm that was written during that time period, it will throw it in there too. I like to use a Joel instance. Like the book of Joel happens way over here. No. 
it's over there because that's where it goes in order in the in the canon of scripture. But the events of Joel happen way over here amongst Kings and Chronicles. Right. And you're going to be reading that where it connects with the actual event in the Word of God. So, so you're, a chronological so, reading. So it's possible to get a, a narrative story, a psalm to go with it, and what the prophet said all at the same time. Very true. Very true. Very true. Awesome. Well, we're looking forward to that. We encourage everyone to check out Faith Bunker on Facebook and join in starting of January next year in another fantastic read-through on the Word of God, reading through the Bible in a year, this time chronologically reading. And you can go there on Faith Bunker. And on Faith Bunker, you will not only get to see what kind of stuff we post now and then, which you never know what we're going to post on there, pictures and encouragement, different things from different people. It's awesome. But you also are going to get a daily reading reminder when I remember to post it, a daily re reading reminder just to tell you what to read today for your for your reading for that day. How convenient is that? So that's on Faith Bunker, not that's Bunker That's on Faith Bunker. That's what I just said. I just said that. I, said I built Bunker the Brothers. whole thing. Now I'm gonna, I can rewind this, <laughs> and I will probably be wrong, but I can rewind it and I find out if I'm right. All right, guys, we've had a great time exploring the real person, not the man, the myth, the legend, but the real person of St. Nicholas. Well, no, we kind of covered all those we things. We did. We did. There's a lot to it. Unfortunately, people get kind of crazy about things, but my gosh, you know, we want to make sure that we get the truth about this guy, because believe it or not, he is a Christian. Two, he died in faith, and three, we're going to run into him again. Uh-oh. Uh-huh. Well, we did okay. <laughs> we didn't say anything bad about him, but the first thing yeah, I... Yeah, we didn't, we didn't say that his name was a... Uh, I'm going to ask him, did you really punch the guy? Trans yeah, I don't want to know that. I want to know. Um, I've, I've heard people say that Santa is just a transposition of the letters of Satan. It's not. Which I think is funny. It comes from Santa Claus. Santa Claus, the Germans. Well, of course it does. Everything comes from Germany. <laughs> so, all right, gentlemen. Have a good one. Bye. Everything comes from Germany. <laughs> <laughs>